Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nintendo Switch demo of Trails of Cold Steel 3. For those that don't know me, my name is Scott, and I make a lot of content here on YouTube about Falcom's The Legend of Heroes Trails series. Now, those of you who are regulars, you might be wondering, why is he doing this right now? Well, the answer is, of course, that Trails of Cold Steel 3 coming to Switch is a big deal. It is the first game in the series to come to a Nintendo platform, not counting a certain gotcha of the same name. So there are a lot of people wondering, what's this Cold Steel thing about? Is it a good fit for me? Is it worth it? Should I, should I jump in here? Well, let me introduce you a little bit to the series. Trails of Cold Steel 3 is the eighth Trails game, and it is the third in its arc, the Cold Steel series. Now, the Trails series is a very interwoven, very closely connected series that's ongoing, same universe, happening over a very short amount of time in universe. So a lot of diehard fans, such as myself, would always recommend that you start from the very beginning of the series, which should be Trails in the Sky first chapter. That said, the publisher of Cold Steel 3 here in the West, and IS America, of course, would love for you to start at Trails of Cold Steel 3. Now, I'll play devil's advocate here and say that I agree that there are much worse places you could start the Trail series than Cold Steel 3. Like, for example, this game's sequel, Cold Steel 4, which will be coming out on PS4 later this year and Switch and PC next year. So, if you wanted somewhere to jump in, you could do worse than Cold Steel 3, though it's not ideal. That said, for those that aren't familiar with Trails but would like to know more, they of course include the backstory menu here, where you can get summaries of Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, you can get character profiles of all the major characters that came from Cold Steel 1 and 2, as well as some other ones that may be returning. You can learn much more about the world, which is very deep. The Trail series takes place on the continent of Zemuria, which you can read about here. You can read about all the countries and states here. For example, the Kingdom of Liberal would be the setting of the first arc in the series, the Liberal arc, Trails in the Sky. The second arc in the series would take place here in Crossbell State, and the third arc, Trails of Cold Steel, takes place in the Erebonian Empire, with other major countries, such as Calvert, the other major power opposite of Erebonia on the continent, to the direct east, and then you have other places such as Rimaferia to the north, North Ambria State also to the north, and others that aren't even named here, such as Le Mans State, or the Holy City of Arteria. This is a very big universe, and the reason why there are fans of these series of these games of this series is because of these little things that piece them together. The fact that it's a long-running JRPG series with every arc taking place in a new place, but the stories all sort of mashing together with one big through line. So Cold Steel is just one piece of the puzzle. But enough about the backstory, let's go back to the title screen. So ultimately, whether or not you want to play this game, and if you want to get into Trails, it's ultimately, ultimately going to be about how fun is it? Is it a fun game? Well, I certainly think so, enough to dedicate many, many, many hours of my life to it. But let's jump in and see what it's like. So Trails of Cold Steel 3 starts out in Meteor Res. This is a point in time taking later in the game. And you will be working your way back to this point should you play through the game. Save me! Oh, I surrender. Just please. Huh. How foolish. Left wing! Block B intercepted! Now moving to our next area of attack! Dead soldiers of a dead land, you have proven your pride. The pages are laid bare. It is up to us to pen their contents. Numerous foes approach. Though they aren't who we foresaw, their skills are still worthy of note. Now, 
We shall see if they are worthy of our final experiment as well. Yes, my lord. In the name of the Stalritter, we shall vanquish these foes! They'll learn what it means to fight us, and to come face to face with the strongest in Ouroboros! It's a white ion. That's the successor of the Type Alpha that wiped out Gorilla Fortress. As far as I can tell, it doesn't seem like it's functional at the moment. <laughs> I say we break it down piece by piece. We can waste it before our precious little Ashen Chevalier even has to lift a finger. What about... Have you forgotten our role as the second team? So what? If he's got everyone's attention already, we might as well. We've got an ace up our sleeve. Now's our chance to finally get a leg up on that glory hound. Glory hound? He... he probably put a lot of thought into this, you know. But it is true he's always rushing off on his own to save the day. Ah, uh, damn it! Now that I'm thinking about it, it really pisses me off! I... do agree to some extent. Uh... I think he's doing a pretty good job, all things considered. <laughs> That's just what a real man is like. He tries to be strict, but melts into being oh so sweet. He'll spend hours caring for you before sparing a second for himself. Someone as dashing yet kind as him would make any girl's heart flutter. What? Speak for yourself! <laughs> a player as clueless as him is the worst kind. Hmm, yes. Very well put. Harsh words, but he does bring it on himself. Uh, again? They sure like to be flashy. The intervals are getting shorter. The battle must be reaching its climax. Time is of the essence. Okay. Class 7, let's move out! Controls, they put a little switch on there for you. It's more or less what all the fans are familiar with, but I'm sure if you get into the game, you'll get familiar with everything. The one difference being, of course, compared to PS4 and PC, that the confirm and options are switched to be more aligned with the A and B placements on the Nintendo <gasps> Switch. Let's jump into combat. Trails of Cold Steel, as are all Trails games, are of course turn-based combat. So if you like turn-based, then uh, you'll like strike. Trails. There. Now, it's mine. combat has evolved, of course, from My the turn. start of the series, and Trails of Cold Steel 3 actually You're introduces mine. several new mechanics that were not right. previously in other Trails games, such as, for example, let's uh. See if I remember how to do it. There we Gunner! go. Gunner mode. So, uh, you see the bottom blue bar on every enemy's uh, little gauge there. That's the break gauge, which is new to Trails of Cold Steel 3. And when you deplete it, ah! like that, enemies break. It's my turn. And once they are broken, you can yeah! easily Let's go! unbalance them. It's mine! Which leads to link attacks. Let's go! Huh. I got this. Now, link attacks are great. Uh. Yeah! Because of course, lets you Keep dispose of enemies rather quickly. This guy's gonna get a turn. Sleep <laughs> wave. All right. Ah, uh, put Muse to sleep. That's okay. Now we have your magic. So, let's uh. cast up an art. My turn! Uh, my turn. Arcus, activate. Arts, of course, take a little I'm bit of going. time to cast. Arcus, activate. But in Cold Steel 3, yeah. they're rather good because they do tons of break damage and quickly deplete uh, break gauges. Huh. Now, let's continue oh. onward.
That's actually not. And turn around and there, there. break these boxes. Ah. Get what's inside. There. Well, let's back up from this enemy and let them pursue me for a little bit. Now, of course, uh, battles are never random. Every enemy is always on the field. Ah. And you have the ability to sneak up and get advantages on them if you can manage to, there we go, attack them from Let's behind. Them out. A regular attack and stun will get you a, uh, will get you double advantage. let use brave orders. Uh, strike. There we go. My turn. You're mine! All right, every enemy is broken now, so let's switch to Windblade. Strike, Windblade formation, which will decrease right. my delay. Yeah, wide open. It's mine. And I should be able to wipe out all these enemies really quick. Now, I yeah. think you saw it earlier because I was feeling out the controls because they're a bit different on Switch. On uh, yeah. PS4, you'd be able to now turn on chance. what we call high speed it's mode more. or turbo mode using the touchpad, but on Switch, it's clicking in the left stick, so this yeah. just speeds up the game a little bit. There. It's mine. This is a feature they go. added for the Western release, because they know fans really love it. Set striker. It does make the game go by a little faster. Let's actually Set gunner. switch back to gunner mode, because it's Stop. a bit more range. It's mine. And there we go. Yeah, we did it. Indeed. Good work. Finishing battles on link attacks nets you little uh, combo yeah. victory yeah. screens like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's actually turn it off now because I'm going to need uh, some focus here. Hold on, let me test something. What button am I looking for? R2. Or ZR, rather. So let's use our field charge disarray. attack. To get a triple advantage, that takes up one of your gauges, though. One of your uh, attack gauges. Now let's go back to using Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer! Ah, uh, strike! It's my turn! Uh, take this! Our chance! It's mine! Sure. And now we can switch back to Windblade. Windblade formation. And have plenty of time to get rid of each and every one of these. Sure. You say if you would. It's down. Keep it up. Let's go. Yeah. It's down. It's mine. It's my turn. Yeah. Now's our chance. It's mine. <laughs> you amazing, just realized Ash. that now? Alright, use the Orbit Charging Station. Rest up a little bit. Because we're about to fight our first little couple boss fights. Cutting-edge machines employed by the Stall Ritter. One thing after another. What kind of circus is this? An extravagant one with a high price for admission. Class 7, our goal is to eliminate these targets. Fire up those combat links! We got work to do! Yeah! Be on guard! It's strong! Sleep near Arcasins. So first, start off again using Sledgehammer. Right you know, this little pattern here. Everyone that knows a bit of the game's meta knows that Sledgehammer and Windblade are pretty much the most potent Brave Order combination. Uh, strike. Sure. You're mine. Only ten percent heal though. All right. All right, Yuna. Let's go with. Brave smash. Uh, smash. There we go. Broke both of them. It's my turn. 
Now we can use Windblade. Strike! Windblade formation! I'm going! Azure wings, shoot! Now's our chance! It's mine! Let's go! Yeah! There! It's mine! It's my turn! Ha! Let's go! It's mine! My turn! Ha! There! It's mine! My turn! So Windblade just wore off, but we can Strike. apply it Windblade right away formation. yet again. My turn! Yeah! There we go, one down. Very well. There! It's mine! Yes! Yeah! Now's our chance! It's mine! Sure. It's down! Keep it up! I don't think Very I well. need to use it again. I should be able to yeah. kill without there. having to need it. It's mine! I'm going! Ha. Now's our chance! It's mine! Done. <laughs> You're amazing, Ash. You just realized that now? They can self-destruct. Stand back. Clown Soleus. Thanks. That was a close one. <sighs> Thanks, Allie. And Sammy, too. You're welcome. However, the name's Sammy. <laughs> I was hoping we would have a minute to ourselves. Nah, we're too popular. Huh. So you sensed us coming. The Stall Ritter. The Stout and the Sharp. Hello. We meet again, children of Class 7. I didn't think you'd make it all this way on your own. Do you intend to overcome certain death without the Ashen Chevalier? <laughs> Cute. Now cut the shit! We know how much stronger than us you are, but we refuse to stand by as you do your bidding. I respect that fire. I will give you my utmost in battle. You'll do as a delectable appetizer before the main course. Now, show me your strength. Can you fledglings handle this? <laughs> I had a bit Let's more go. of a challenge this time. And as an Inea, the stout and the sharp of the Stall Ritter. Oh, let's start off with Sledgehammer again. Sledgehammer! Let's go! And start delaying them a little bit with Rain Slash. Uh, strike! <laughs> I got this. You're not! <laughs> and you can skip animations Here to make it go. even speedier. Uh, Brave Smash will work again. There we go. Our it's mine. Perfect. I'm going. And with that, they're pretty much Strike. done. Wind blade formation. Yes. Now I think taking out Inay is going to be a little bit easier. Now's our chance. It's mine. My turn. It's down. It's mine. We need only yes. reduce one of their health bars below the red line. Now's our chance. It's mine. My turn. But why not make it interesting? Uh, what am I looking for here? There we go. R. This is it. Huh? One more. I'll oh, finish it. Behold, the dual blades of Vander. Now! Ha! I'll end it. Ha! Ragnar, strike! Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> what fun. Indeed. They have quite a bite to them. <sighs> they're acting like we're nothing to them. It's better to assume they're conserving their energy. Why the hell are you two playing around? Stop wasting time before our main enemy shows up. Ah, you're here early. And so ends our fun. That's the head knight of the stall ritter. Duvali the Swift. She'll be trouble. <laughs> she may be kind of a ditz, but she's fast. Who, who are you calling a ditz, cocky little hatchling? Ines, Enea! We'll put a stop to them with our Radiant Star Formation! Very well. <laughs> Don't hate us for what's about to happen. It's just like before. That the best you got? Bring it on! Prepare for... Not so fast. Sooner than we expected. We made it. Excuse us. Oh. <laughs> How am I not surprised? Told you, <laughs> Glory Hound. The hero of this story. <sighs> Instructor. Why are you here? Weren't you supposed to be in the left wing? <laughs> the paths meet up here, so we decided to see how things were going for you. <laughs> Seeing all the paths firsthand, I understand why they call this fortress impregnable. Leave them to us. We're almost there. See you again at the tower. Yes, Instructor. Thank you. <sighs> Fine. Just... Be careful! <laughs> Charging headfirst into your graves, are you? Don't say I didn't warn you. If you're insistent on challenging our lord, I will cut you down right here and now! Two arms, Class 7, Ashen Chevalier!
All right, well, there's your opening. And I must say, uh, okay, that did save. That I much, uh, very much like the save menu in the Switch version, because it's identical to the PC version. And unlike the PS4 version, which uses the front end of the PS4 UI, which I really am not a fan of. So saving in Switch is actually faster than it is on PlayStation 4. Now let's head back to the start of the year in the spring. The next stop is Leaves. Leaves. We will be stopped for... There's our hero. So without getting too much into like spoilers about what happened in the first two games, in case you haven't played them and you may want to someday, but right now everyone on this train is noticing our venerable hero. They recognize him. He's the Ashen Chevalier, the title he was called just moments ago. He's a bit of a national hero at the moment for the events that happened at the end of Trails of Cold Steel 2, but it's sort of unwanted attention. A lot of people in the Erebonian Empire now know his name and face, but our hero's not so much into the recognition, and it's kind of not what he's really after. And here's a big reason why they know who he is. Valimar the Ashen Knight. Have we nearly arrived? Yeah. Reen Schwarzer. Sorry I had to be cooped up in Gorelia Fortress this past month. And I'm sure this isn't exactly a first-class cabin either. <laughs> Not to worry. This is something that needed to be done. While resting, the drain on my energy is insignificant. Besides, if it will reduce the burdens you shoulder, I am more than happy to comply. <laughs> you know, I'd think there was a human in there if I didn't already know that was you talking. Thanks, Velimar. You are welcome. Mm, is this it? Aha! Uh -huh. Sure is. <sighs> For crying out loud. I don't know what all the fuss is about. Do they really need us to supervise unloading this junk? Huh? Picture that going through a landing port. Wow. I'd heard about him, but seeing one up close is wild. Wonder what they're doing here. So Trails of Cold Steel 3 is the point in the Cold Steel arc where Falcon Bianta merged the stories of the previous Trails games that became before Cold Steel. And this exact moment would be one of those indicators of such moments. These two characters in front of us, on the left is Tita Russell, and on the right is Agate Krosner. These two characters were party members, main characters, in the first arc, Trails in the Sky, the liberal arc. A seven ards tall humanoid weapon. Panzer Soldats or something, yeah? No, I don't think so. Oh, this is the Ashen Knight, isn't it? Get out of here. Yeah, you're exactly right. I wouldn't have expected a civilian to know that, much less someone from outside Erebonia. <laughs> Let's just say I'm a little interested in things like this. A little? Your whole family goes nuts for this kind of stuff. But how'd you know we're not from around here? You have just the tiniest sliver of an accent. I'm guessing you're from somewhere down south? Liberal, maybe? Is it that easy to tell? <laughs> Bingo. So what? That makes you the Ashen Chevalier? It, yeah, I'm surprised you knew that too. Um... <sighs> Schwarzer, are you back here? Patrick High Arms. A friend of Reen's. We'll be arriving in five minutes. Are you prepared? Hmm? All set. I'm good to go whenever. 
sorry for holding you up. We gotta get ready ourselves. That's right. Thanks for talking with us. Who are those two? They didn't appear to be your everyday civilians. They're from Liberal. I guess they're getting off soon, too. Something tells me I'll be seeing more of them at my new job. Oh, is that so? I admit, I have heard the rumors. Now arriving at Leave Station. Leave Station. We will be stopped for 10 minutes to unload cargo. Got to unload my giant talking robot. It would appear little has changed. The Ashen Knight is as beloved by the masses as ever. Well, I, uh, tried to lay low this past year. I've turned down all the interview requests I've been bombarded with. It's little wonder, then. For a young hero like yourself, such actions only serve to grant you an irresistible air of mystery. The rumors of your role in the Northern War have, by this point, far outstripped the truth. <sighs> My apologies. That was a regrettable slip of the tongue. No, it's all right. It's just something I'll have to deal with. Thank you, Patrick. For the last year, no, last two years, you've helped me out more times than I can count. Well, that was seven. <laughs> I've simply been performing my duty as a member of the glorious Class One. Of course I could spare some consideration for a hapless classmate with barely enough attendance to graduate. One who has unreasonable tasks thrust upon him on a near daily basis, yet somehow manages to triumph regardless. And you said I was sudden. You're serving as the deputy of the Marquis's family in Ordis now, right? I'm sure that's no walk in the park either, but I know you'll give it everything you've got. But of course, there's no way I can allow us to fall behind House Alborea. I recommend you do the same for whatever may come at your unique new workplace. And seeing as she is not so terribly far, do be sure to keep in touch with Lady Elise. Perhaps you might even put in a good word? Thanks again for all your help, Patrick. But that's an entirely different matter. Reen sister? No. <sighs> Take care. Hope to see you again soon. Indeed. <laughs> oh yes, it nearly slipped my mind. About that pledge Class 7 made one year ago. I hope to see it come to fruition. Oh. Yeah, I hope so too. Prologue, spring once again. Well, here I am.
the town of Leaves and the Heimdall suburbs. I've never been to the suburbs west of Heimdall before. Almost reminds me of Trista. <laughs> there are even Lino flowers blooming here. Trista being the setting of the school from Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. The original home of Thor's Military Academy, which Reen attended. Trista and the Academy. I wonder how everyone who's still there is doing. Now Principal Van Dyke is after he returned to active duty. I never would have dreamed something like that would happen. And Reen's new workplace. That must be it there. I can tell it's brand new even from here. They said they'd take Valimar to the hangar on sight. Reen? Huh? Don't do you justice. You look so mature now. Did you get taller too? I almost didn't recognize you. Uh, Toa? Oh, did you not recognize me either? <laughs> I definitely haven't gotten taller, but I'm hoping my new work uniform adds some womanly charm. Oh, or. Maybe shows that my figure's filled out a little bit more. Uh, hold on. Hmm? It's just, uh, well, we haven't seen each other in a while, and I could never get a hold of you. Then you just show up out of nowhere, dressed for work, in the same town I'm about to start work? Reen's old senior at Thor's Military Academy, Toa Herschel. I never imagined we'd end up working at the same place. Sorry, I didn't mean to surprise you. I thought you already knew. Well, a lot happened before graduation. And after it. I'm sure you've heard all about it. Of course. It was actually one of the reasons I decided to come here. But it sure was a nice surprise to hear you'd be joining me. Same for me. Well, anyway... Congratulations on graduating, Rain. I'm sure there are plenty of other people who want to say that to you. But I figured I'd do it before anyone else. Thanks, Toa. Wait, do you want something more professional, like Ms. Herschel now? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Toa is just fine. Remember what I said when we first met? There's no need for formalities with me. Ms. Herschel is awfully tempting, though. <sighs> She hasn't changed a bit. So, Toa, you've been here a little while now, right? What's our new workplace like? Hmm. Well, I'm sure they told you a bunch of different things when you accepted your position. But I think this job is going to turn out to be a lot more difficult than you expect. Will it? I've been mentally preparing myself for the worst. I just hope I'm ready. Have you already met all of our colleagues? Yeah, we've all met. You're the last to arrive. I'll introduce you to them. But brace yourself, okay? <laughs> I feel like the butterflies in my stomach have turned into stampeding rhinociders. It, it's okay. I'm in the same boat as you. Let's work together as fellow graduates of Thor's and get through this. <laughs> Roger that. Oh, we're here. Thor's Military Academy Branch Campus, newly built. The color's different, but it's nice they kept the horned lion crest. Mm-hmm. This is the main entrance to our new workplace. Welcome, Reen. To the newly established Thor's Military Academy Branch Campus in Leeds. So 
So unlike the original Thors that Reen had attended for the last couple of years, Branch Campus, of course, newly built, much different, much more modern. The culture here is going to be a bit different as well. And of course, he goes from being a student to now being the instructor. This location is much more, not just newer and more modern, but homogenized. Very utilitarian. Rin Schwarzer, welcome. Major Michael Irving, the RMP. I am Michael Irving of the Railway Military Police. Branch campus though it may be, I will do my utmost to serve as chief instructor. <laughs> Michael's a brand new character, actually. Never before seen. Well, well. Lucky me. Didn't expect to run into such a celeb at a place like this. Unlike this gentleman. Randolph Orlando. Name's Randolph Orlando. Got transferred here from the Imperial Army Crossbell Unit. I've been hearing your name all over lately. Pleasure to finally meet the man himself. <laughs> Reen. I'm Reen Schwarzer. Just a rookie who recently graduated from Thor's main campus. Pleased to meet you, Major Irving, First Lieutenant Orlando. Likewise. It's an honor to be able to work with the famous Ashen Chevalier. But keep in mind, we're not looking for heroics from Divine Knights here. We're only interested in your aptitude as an instructor. Understood. He's from the Railway Military Police. I certainly didn't expect to find a ranking officer like him working here. Not to mention... That look tells me you know a bit about my sordid backstory. Oh, do I, Randy? Randy here is another former party member in the Trail series from the second arc set in Crossbell. Randy and I have a very special connection. He means a lot to me. Been peeking through the Intelligence Division's files, I take it. Yes, I can't deny it. From what I could tell, it was a pretty complicated situation that sent you here. <laughs> Not as complicated as yours, I'm sure. Anyway, all of us instructors are here now. Major, Instructor Randolph, I'm looking forward to working with you. Indeed. I'm curious to see what you'll bring here. Especially after you turn down a position with us. I've been curious as to why. <laughs> uh, so you knew about that? Oh, that's so? You must be better than you look for the RMP to roll out the red carpet. I heard you graduated early. What are you, like, 17 or something? Um... Actually, I'm 21. What? Nah, -uh. you're seriously only three years younger than me? Four instructors. That's about what I was expecting, honestly. Are we going to teach the entire curriculum among us, though? Correct. There aren't many students, but it will still require great work on our part. Training, lectures, all manner of miscellaneous tasks. We will, however, receive assistance from the special advisor and the principal. We have a special advisor? And what's our principal like? Well, let's just say that out of all the people in this great big empire, I never thought I'd meet someone quite as intense as our principal. Really? Uh, try not to be too shocked, okay? You've actually met her before, Reen. Thank you for waiting. Oh. Speak of the devil. Uh, uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> Whatever is that slack jawed expression for? Professor G. Schmidt, probably the smartest man in the Empire. I believe we met during the Civil War. 
Or have you already forgotten my face? Not that I give a whit either way. Uh, no, of course not. It's good to see you again, Professor Schmidt. I've always appreciated how you helped me with Valimar's Tachi. As I said before, save it. Though my title is Special Advisor, I plan to focus only on my research. Do endeavor to make yourself useful to me, Schwarzer. Or should I say, Ashen Awakener. <laughs> huh. He was one of Professor Epstein's disciples, right? Or maybe not. You sure he ain't some faker? Uh, no, he's the real deal. <sighs> I'm starting to understand why I got hired here in the first place. I never imagined I would meet you here. Oh, it's been about half a year, hasn't it, Schwarzer? Well, since we've all gathered, allow me to say a few words about myself. Aurelia Le Guin. During the Civil War, I was the general of the defeated Noble Alliance. I then oversaw the Northern War, resulting in the annexation of North Ambria. But you may think of me as Aurelia Le Guin, principal of Thor's branch campus. <laughs> Reen. All that packed into one woman. Guess it's not so crazy for you to be here after all, eh, Major? Hmm. Uh, Principal Le Guin, it's time. Shall we proceed? Yes, let's begin. Herschel, gather up our fledglings and bring them to the grounds. Y yes ma'am! I'll see you soon, Rain. Bah! Alrighty, let's see what kind of guys and gals we got. Schwarzer. See to it you aren't late. L late? To what? To our entrance ceremony, of course. What? I had no idea. <laughs> that would be because we set the date and time without telling you. You'll even be meeting your fledglings there. Exciting, no? Show them what it means to be the Ashen Chevalier. Why would they not tell him? It's starting to seem like the rumors about this place being difficult weren't exaggerations. All right then, I should probably put these on. And there's the entire student body. Not a whole lot of them. A rather small school. Here comes our faculty. See that Reen put on glasses to make himself more conspicuous so they wouldn't notice that he's the Ashen Chevalier. Oh, that woman. Isn't she the Golden Rakshasa? And that black haired guy. Whoa, he's super famous. Huh, it's him. But my favorite gag in this game is that they never work. It's just a joke that Falcon put in that he wears the glasses to like conceal himself, but so many people recognize him anyway. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> oh dear. How unexpected. The Ashen Chevalier. No way. <laughs> <laughs> what? That girl is. Attention! I will have silence! We will now begin the entrance ceremony for Thor's Military Academy's branch campus. The opening speeches will be omitted. We will begin by announcing class assignments. First, 
Class 8, Combat Tactics. The instructor is Randolph Orlando. Right. Step forward when I call your name. Jessica, Wayne, Sydney, Maya, Ash, Freddy, Gustav, and Leonora. You eight. <laughs> Next, Class 9, Military Finance. The instructor is Toa Herschel. Um, I'll call out names now. Sandy, Kyrie, Tita, Louise, Tatiana, Valerie, Muse, Pablo, and Stark. There are nine of you in total. <laughs> That leaves three. Class 8 and Class 9. Combat tactics and military finance. Then the ones left over are... Silence! We will now have a word from our principal. Principal, if you would. Huh. So, I have neglected to talk about it until now, but of course, Trails of Cold Steel 3 is fully dubbed in English, though the full version of the game will also come with dual audio, you can switch it to Japanese if you'd like. However, I'm a rather big fan of the dubbing in all of the Cold Steel releases here in the West, and this particular game is a uh, sun by a studio called PCB Productions. And the uh, director of that would be Valerie Aram, who also voices this character, Aurelia Le Guin. And I bring this up now because I rather enjoy the monologue she's about to do. I am Aurelia Le Guin, principal of the Branch Campus. As some of you are new to Erebonia, not all of you may be familiar with my name. That, however, is of little concern to me. A few of you may have noticed already, but I'll spell it out for the rest. This school is a trash bin. Huh? Hmm. Thor's main campus will be welcoming the Crown Prince this year. As such, it will go through heavy reform. This campus is a place they can toss aside those deemed too troublesome, or those with problematic backgrounds. Just like that, all of you, our instructors, and even myself, are here because we have been tossed aside. <sighs> hey now. No, Principal Le Guin, that is far too... However, there is a saying. Be ever vigilant as though the world is a battlefield. Such a mindset is difficult to learn in times of peace. However, the situation we find ourselves in is a perfect environment for it. Those who lack the resolve to better themselves, to reforge themselves in the fires of adversity, leave now or you run the risk of leaving later, in Adios's arms. Very well. In that case, I welcome each and every one of you to Thor's Military Academy's Branch Campus. Arise, O oh youth, and become the foundation of the world. I greet you with these familiar words from Emperor Dreykels. Well, I'm nice and overwhelmed now, but... Just where are we supposed to go? <sighs> General, um, Principal, could I get you to announce the final class? <sighs> huh? Very well. We'll be picking up after the main campuses classes 1 through 6, with our own classes 7 through 9. The three of you make up class 7. Special Operations. Your instructor will be him, Reen Schwarzer. Class 7. 
Now, that's a bit important to note because while Reen was in his first year at the Thor's main campus, he was also in Class 7, though that one, as you will hear shortly, is much, was much different than this new one. Einhell Keep. Wow! I looked over the blueprints, but I didn't think it'd be this big! Don't get so excited. This facility is nothing remarkable. As I explained before, much of your duties will be performed here under my direction. I expect nothing short of raw talent from a Russell. Uh, yes, sir! Tita's family, the Russells, are uh, very well known, and her grandfather, Albert Russell, is uh, to liberal what this man, G. Schmidt, is to Erebonia. Pretty much the smartest man there in the kingdom. So, she's a student here after all. I could swear I've heard the name Russell somewhere before. See, there you go. But more importantly... Her mother is also very, very talented. Where class seven is clearly no coincidence. Only three students, and she's one of them. Combat tactics and military finance are undergoing their orientations at the moment. Special operations will be having an orienteering exercise. You must make it through this facility in one piece. <laughs> in one piece? What does that mean? What is this building for? It's called Einhell Keep. It was built in conjunction with the branch campus for testing new methods of training. The interior is fully controllable via orbital technology and features variable difficulty levels. As for your exercise, you will be combating monsters and such unleashed within the keep. What? M monsters? That's a joke, right? Now I understand. Special operations, indeed. I guess this is a fitting enough exercise, given our class's name. And it's not just for my students, either, is it? It helps that you're quick on the uptake. That said, don't assume it will be the same as the Class 7 you were part of. Rather than an experimental clash between social classes, this one will act as an established task force for assignments in the field. And as its instructor, you will have your students see each assignment through. It's all starting to come together. <laughs> Hold on just a second! We did what you said and came here, but what the heck is all this crap? This is just... I mean, no one ever told me I was being put in some shady Black Ops squad. Your placement in Class 7 is the result of your aptitude test, Cadet Crawford. If you are dissatisfied, you have the option to pack your bags and return to the Military Police Academy. <laughs> That's all the way in Crossbell. I've yet to accept the situation, but I understand it now, at the very least. Can you give us more details? Certainly. Instructor Schwarzer and the three of you will enter the keep and stand by for further instructions. Michael handed Reen four Master Courts. While on standby, they will explain their qualifications as you brief them on the use of the Arcus II. Understood. Bah! Finally, we can begin the trial. Disciple candidate, don't dawdle. Everything must be up and running in ten minutes. Yes. Damn, looks like this school's even more messed up than I'd heard. I'd prefer if non-affiliates stayed off the premises. <laughs> Take it easy. I ain't here to cause trouble. As soon as she's done with her orientation, I'm getting the hell out of here. Very well. 
You may have been referred here by the royal family, but don't forget your place. That extends to any actions you and your friends will take in the Empire from here on out. <laughs> I'd say that's up to you guys, you know? You got a whole country up to its neck in plots and schemes, and then a screwed up school like this pops up out of nowhere. Really makes you wonder who's pulling the strings around here. I suppose I should have expected as much from an A-rank bracer. Congrats on the A-rank status, Agate. So Tita, though not a part of Class 7, does assist Professor Schmidt with all his little experiments. A facility full of untested mechanisms certainly sounds like a playground for the professor. So how much do you already know? Nothing too specific. The above ground portion is a cube measuring 50 arch on each side, and the below ground area is still being expanded. Hmm? Are the two of you already acquainted? We are. I just had no idea she'd be one of my students. But that's neither here nor there. Let's start with introductions while everything's being prepped. I just got here earlier today, so I'm sorry I haven't had time to speak with you two yet. I'm... <clears throat> Why even bother introducing yourself? We all know you're Reen Schwarzer, the Ashen Chevalier. The big hero who put an end to the Erebonian Civil War when he was just a student. Not to mention the occupation of Crossbell. I'm sure everyone in Erebonia knows who you are. Probably everyone in Crossbell, too. <sighs> in addition, you resolved incident after incident across the Empire as part of your schoolwork. Then, during the Northern War last October, you worked alongside General Le Guin and Brigadier General Bardius to annex North Ambria. Le Guin? Like, our principal? Wait, what? And he helped occupy North Ambria? That's erroneous. The actual circumstances were... You're both very well informed. Though, calling me a hero is a bit much. I'd still like to say a little bit about myself. As you know, I'm Reen Schwarzer. I'm a graduate of Thor's Military Academy's main campus. I got my diploma just last month, and I'm starting as an instructor here at the branch campus today. I'll be overseeing martial arts and Panzer Soldat training outside the classroom. Inside the classroom, I'll be teaching history. That is, of course, in addition to being the homeroom teacher for Class 7 Special Operations. <laughs> I'll go next. Kurt Vander. My name is Kurt Vander. I'm from the capital. I've heard more than just the common stories about you. You're a Vander? That would make you General Zex and Lieutenant Colonel Mueller's... Mueller is my older brother, and Zex is my uncle. Though I'm aware I look nothing like them, right up to my hair. Yeah. There's Mueller. And that would be Zex. It's true, he doesn't have dark hair or even a similar build. Mueller would also be a former party member from Trails in the Sky, a good friend, and Zex has appeared in a few games including Cold Steel 1 and 2. By the way, are those glasses fake? They don't look good on you at all. You should probably get rid of them. Oof. Fashion is clearly not their intended function. <sighs> Alright, I get it. They don't look good. No need to rub it in. So the catch here with Kurt is that being a Vander, being part of the Vander family, uh, it's a rather famous family in Erebonia. And until recently, the Vander family was known as the protectors of the Imperial family. The, uh, you know, the essentially the royal family in Erebonia. The family of the Emperor and Empress and the Prince and all that. And uh, his older brother, Mueller, is uh, very good friends and is the protector of the eldest prince. And Kurt was going to follow in the, in the same footsteps and become the protector of the crown prince, the younger of the two. However, things recently changed in Erebonia. Hence why he finds himself here at the Thor's branch campus. Nice to meet you, Kurt. 
You're up next. <sighs> Fine. Oh, brother. Una Crawford. I'm Una Crawford. I transferred here from the Crossbell Police Academy. And honestly, I'd rather not be here. But if that's how it's gonna be, then I'll just have to make the most of it. Ah, Crossbell. I had my suspicions. So the context you're missing is Una being Crossbell and Crossbell was an autonomous state for about 70 years, but after the concurrently running events of the Crossbell arc, as well as Trails of Gold Steel 1 and 2, Erebonia annexed Crossbell, and there's some pretty hard feelings there, hence why she doesn't particularly like Erebonians, and she certainly doesn't like Erebonia's hero, the Ashen Chevalier, for the small role that he played in the aftermath of that. So, when you say police academy, you're talking about the military police academy, right? There was no military slapped on the name before the annexation. You guys are the ones who changed it. Are you saying I can only call it by the official name the great and powerful Erebonia has blessed it with? No, that's not what I meant. Sorry. I was being insensitive. <laughs> well, I might have overreacted. But I still don't accept that name. Yeah. That's completely understandable. Hmm? I'm last then. Altina Orion. Altina Orion, formerly part of the Imperial Army's Intelligence Division. Uh, uh... Isn't that classified? My affiliation with them ended upon my enrollment here. On paper. Please, think nothing of it. I feel as though I've just heard something I shouldn't have. The Intelligence Division is pretty hardcore, isn't it? Hold up! What do you mean, on paper? Slip of the tongue. Oops. <laughs> There's that snark. Thank you for waiting. Preparations are now complete for the Level 0 Einhell trial. If you haven't already, please set your Arcus 2s now. Is that the girl from earlier? I was under the impression she was a student, like us. Understood. Give us just a moment. Each of you were given one of these, right? Ah, that. I was sent one, but I haven't turned it on yet. It's a battle orbment. Normal battle orbments are personal devices that link with their user and can produce a variety of effects. They can improve your physical abilities and allow you to cast orbital arts, among other things. But this is the newest model, the Arcus II. It has a few additional functions. Interesting. It's a little different from the Enigma models in Crossbell. To be precise, they are the product of a collaboration between the Reinford Company and Epstein Foundation. I assume these models are combat ready? Yeah. I'll explain how they work. Now, each of you take one of these. Reen handed a Master Quartz to each of the three students. We get Master Quartz? The Enigmas did have these. The basics should be the same. Go ahead and set your Master Quartz in the central slot. Yes, sir. Uh, here? I should set mine while they're at it. Or Mints. So this is the technology that drives the Trail series, as well as the magic and battle system. A general term for mechanical devices that extract orbital energy from septium and use it to generate magical effects and enhancements. Battle Orbit, the Arcus II. A personal use device that can harness orbital energy in a variety of ways depending on the quartz set in it. Since they are tailor made for their users, the Orbit's internal structure varies from one unit to another. Quartz, a crystal circuit. A circuit made from septium fragments called Sepith, set into Battle Orbits to harness a variety of power and properties. That's a lot of jargon, I know. Master Quartz, a special kind of quartz, which can be set into the center of the Ar new Arcus II Battle Orbits. These quartz are stronger and more adaptable than regular quartz. By fighting battles with one set in your orbit, it will level up and gain new abilities. Your current story objective is always displayed on the right, and you can press down to view the minimap. Please set Arena's Master Quartz into his Arcus 2. Master Quartz can be set in the orbit section of the camp menu. Which 
you open with X. So a little brief uh, rundown here is that, you know, without blinding you with too much jargon, if you're not familiar with it, the technology in the trail series runs on what we call orbital energy, which is uh, just a fancy way of saying it's magic from crystals. Uh, when they designed the trail series, they kind of wanted like a catch, something that makes it all unique. So basically, 50 years before the trail series starts, uh, the continent went through what's called the Orbital Revolution, where they discovered this technology where you get a unlimited amount of energy through these magic crystals from a, from a crystal called Septium. And all you need to know is Septium has fragments called Sepith. Sepith gets crushed together and refined into these little thing called quartz, which are circuits. And they go into devices like this and they power all sorts of things. Not just battle ornaments like this, but, you know, cars and heating, lighting and weaponry and everything. So your battle ornaments, which every party member in every game has, is how you insert your little crystals and you uh, build them to unlock spells and whatnot. That's the gist of it. So put the Master Quartz in, bring it, and back out. That's all we had to do. Whoa! I can feel it working. Now that you've set your Master Quartz, you're synced with your Arcus units. You should be able to notice a significant difference in combat. All right. Okay, now this is new. How long do you intend to keep me waiting? Sorry, Professor. We're ready. Then let's not waste any more time. Level zero begins on floor B1. The trial will be considered completed once you return to ground level. Professor, isn't that red love? Sir, you shouldn't use that. Oh, don't act like you have a lick of common sense. You're Albert's granddaughter. It's time we saw what Class 7's special operations is made of. I'm curious to see if you can survive with a passing score. Hey, watch the floor! Write yourself and brace for the landing. Altina, you. Clown Soleus. Never mind. Professor talking, then the floor opened up? Um, it was Yuna, correct? Huh? Uh huh? My apologies, but if you could move. It's not that you're heavy, but I'm having trouble breathing. <laughs> <clears throat> well then, history repeats itself. The floor appears to be padded, so bruising should not be an issue. How strangely like the obscene positions you often find yourself in, Instructor Reen. Please don't say things that'll give people the wrong impression. Oh, wow. I'm surprised you're already calling me an instructor. That is your current designation. Falcom takes a little too much inspiration out of anime sometimes. <laughs> I assure you, I didn't intend for this to happen. Then again, I suppose intent is irrelevant. I won't make any further excuses. You may hit me if it'll make you feel better. <laughs> How very admirable of you. You being so calm about it just pisses me off even more. So I think I'll take you up on that. Bonian boys are just so... Ugh. I do not believe his nationality was a factor. You were just a little unlucky. Not unlucky. 
I lacked the expertise to make a proper landing. That resulted in embarrassment for one of my classmates. I admit my fault. Uh, I see. He's so mature for his age. Well, minus one stinging cheek, the three of you look fine to me. So, it's time to begin storming the keep. But first, I'll need each of you to show me your weapons. This whole thing is a joke, right? Do we really have to play along? I know the professor, and he isn't the type to joke around. He's serious about measuring each of our abilities. I want to learn everyone's combat styles so we can work together and get out of here safely. <sighs> Understood. These are my weapons. Two swords? That takes skill. You're using the Vander School's dual blade style then. I knew of it, but I've never met a practitioner. I admit our great sword style has far more notoriety. But that style also requires one to be born with a broader physique. These blades are better suited for the likes of me. I didn't realize. Well, Yuna, how about you? I'm still not down for all this. But I get it. This is a military academy, so here you go. Another dual wielder. You use side handle batons? They look a little more complicated than that. What are they exactly? These are gun breakers. Special tonfa with guns installed. Developed by the one and only CGF. They can switch between melee and mid-range firing. An intriguing weapon. A crossbell guardian force, right? If I recall, First Lieutenant Orlando was once part of it. He'd left long before the occupation disbanded them, though. Good to know. We'll see how well they work in action today. You do seem to know your way around them. Uh, of course I do. I trained with them at the police academy. And they'll be way more useful than a couple of weapons as old as the Great Collapse. Hmm? <laughs> we'll see where everyone stands once we've engaged in actual combat. You're up next, Altina. Understood. Hold up. There's something I've been wondering for a while now. Who let a kid enroll at a military academy? I've been curious about that myself. She claimed to be with the intelligence division, but surely she won't be joining us in battle. Well, personally, I agree, but... There is no need for concern. My physical age is approximately 14 years old. I am no small child. Physical age? No, you're definitely small. I also have my weapon, the basis for my admittance into the Intelligence Division. What the hell? This explains that black shadow I thought I saw earlier. Clown Soleus, a combat shell. The latest version of the line of special weaponry. Further details are classified. Suffice to say, it will contribute to our overall fighting strength. Um, are things like that normal in the Empire? Of course not. It's my first time seeing something like this, too. The Golden Rakshasa, the Ashen Chevalier, and even a girl like her. What manner of place is this branch campus? I don't blame either of you for having questions, but we can save them for another time. By the way, this is my weapon. Of course, the Tachi is used by students of the Eight Leaves One Blade School. Just like back then. Uh, I mean, it's just like the sword Arios used. Right. It's not an Imperial-style sword. It comes from the East. <laughs> I guess the Divine Blade of Wind is pretty famous in Crossbell, huh? A lot happened, but he still has plenty of fans. Even when a certain empire has made him a wanted man. Yeah, I suppose so. That covers everyone then. Let's be on our way. We're currently on floor B1. If we make it back up to ground level, this little trial will be over. I'll give you some tips along the way on combat, 
how to use arts and your Arcus units. Follow me and proceed carefully and deliberately. <laughs> okay, let's just go. I'll give it my all. Commence mission. About the notebook. You can open the notebook by pressing... <laughs> Which switch button is that? Is it minus? Yeah, it must be minus. <laughs> While in the field or in the main screen of the camp menu. The notebook will automatically record information on a variety of subjects and more tabs will be unlocked as the game progresses. In the main tab of the notebook, you can check your overall rating. Navigation log can also be found here. Minimap. Press down to expand the minimap. This allows you to view the area's topography as well as your location and the location of enemies. Party order. You can change the character leading the party in the camp menu or on the field by pressing L. In addition to using the tactics section of the camp menu to change your party's order as well as your battle formation. The entrance is right over there. Let's move out as soon as we're ready. Yes, sir. Uh, just what the heck is all this? So other things, you can also press up to get your message log, which is a very useful feature. Wouldn't it be nice if more games before Trails of Cold Steel 3 have this? Well, one of them does unofficially. And let's see, what else you got in here? Can we mess with? Can we do this yet? Can we? No. They will have to tutorialize me before I can do it. That's okay. So if you were a little confused by all the battle stuff I was explaining back in the first part, that's okay. We'll get to it here. There's uh, a much slower way to learn all of this stuff. Monsters, right from the start. Can't believe he seriously released monsters down here. Sector Reen, what are your orders? First off, I want to see each of your battle skills. Everyone, prepare for battle. We're gonna make her fight too? I have no issue with combat. Don't worry, I'll back you guys up. We're going in now. Stay focused, everyone. Encounter types. Combat begins when you walk into enemies on the field. You press A to attack enemies on the field. An attack from the front will cause an enemy to pause briefly, but if you land an attack from behind, the enemy will be stunned for a set time. Some enemies can be stunned by attacks from the front. So double advantage, advantage, standard, and enemy advantage. So you can also be ambushed by enemies. About assault attacks. Once you've accumulated enough assault points, you can press ZR to activate an assault attack. Unlike normal field attacks, assault attacks will trigger a battle on hit, allowing you to begin encounters with a surprise attack and maximum advantage. Press the R to spend assault points and perform an assault attack. Combat begins the moment an assault attack hits an enemy, allowing for a triple advantage. Points are not spent if the attack misses. So this enemy will actually stay still so we can hit it from behind. Our chance to attack. Take double advantage. Active combatants each take action on their turn. After doing so, the ally or enemy below them on the battle order bar takes their turn. The character at the top of the bar takes their turn, and then after acting, the character will move down the bar. The time until they can act again depends on the delay of the action they took. There are a variety of bonuses that can appear on different turns. Effects such as HP, heal, and critical are just some of the bonuses. So these are your AT bonuses, all the things that can appear on the bar on the left side. So you have your HP heals, your EP heals, CP heals, Brave Points Up, Critical, Sepith Up, Guard Break, Zero Arts, Zero Order, among some other ones that they did not explain yet, because they can't happen just here, but they can happen later. So they want to start off by just doing a normal attack. Press A to attack. You select an enemy outside a character's attack range, the character will not attack, only moving as close to the enemy as possible. Press B to move, uh, use the left stick to select where to move. So you can move with B, or attack with A. Crafts. Press X to perform crafts. Crafts cost CP, craft points, to perform. By dealing and receiving damage, you will gain CP. Crafts are special combat skills unique to each character. New crafts are gained by leveling up. Items. Press left to use items. The item and move commands have short AT delay, so use them to influence the turn order. It's my turn! And yes, you can also use items here. We have the ability to use crafts now. 
So let's use Crimson Slash. Crimson Slash! It's my turn! Uh, let's actually move this time. So you can move around anywhere you want in the battle arena, or as far as the character will allow. Change their orders a little bit. My turn. Change the spacing of your party members. But the reason I really wanted to do that was essentially to pass the turn. Because I would like to... Ow, actually, I don't have it. My bad. Altina doesn't start with it. I was hoping to use... Uh... Wait. Yeah, I don't have it. So instead, let's go into our item menu and use the battle scope. This is an item that lets you analyze enemies. <laughs> Jeweled Ripper. So, uh, there are turn. so many monsters in the game, and they <gasps> all collect data in what's known as the Monster Notebook. <laughs> well, look at that! And for collection purposes, if you want to fill out every page of the notebook, you're going to want to scan enemies like that to fill them out. I can't remember whether or not there was an achievement for it in the other versions of the game, or if it was just for doing the entire notebook. I actually, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if they, de like, designed a, uh, equivalent system for the Switch, given that the Switch doesn't have a, an achievement system on its own. Yes, Altina's combat shell is very impressive. It's also what makes her a bit unique. So, as you picked up on, her and Reen have an established relationship. They met in Trails of Cold Steel 2, and they've been working together for a little while now. Over, just over a year. Kurt and Yuna, on the other hand, are, it's going to take a while to get them to get along. The battle tab is now unlocked in your notebook. The battle tab will automatically record information about enemies you have fought. In order to unlock all of a given enemy's information, you must make numerous attacks against them or use certain arts, items, or crafts. Analysis. Fighting a given type of enemy gradually unlocks information about them. The battle scope item, as well as certain arts and crafts, can unlock all information at once. Status Efficiency. This shows how likely an enemy is to be afflicted with a particular status ailment. Efficiency only represents how likely a status ailment is to work on an enemy. It does not affect the ailment's duration or potency. So let me go into our ornaments, because now we have access to everyone's ornaments. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, I don't have any quartz on me, so I can't improve anyone. this an orbit charging station? That's right. If things get a bit too dangerous, we should come back here to rest up. Orbit charging stations like this are found in particularly dangerous areas. Inspecting it by pressing A and choosing rest will allow you to recover HP and EP, but not CP. Recovering CP is uh, much rarer. Only, only a select number of items in the game can do that. Your craft points are very valuable. An insect monster. Looks like it's got a pretty hard shell. Seems fairly agile, too. Enemies with either of those characteristics are best dealt with by using arts. That's exactly right, Kurt. Let's try it out. Well, this one will also stay still so we can Sit. hit it from behind. Our chance to attack. Arts. Press Y to use arts. Arts require time to cast and consume EP when used. Arts can be used by setting a quartz or master quartz into an orbit. Attack arts and support arts. So you got different kinds. Elemental efficiency. This shows how effective arts of each element will be against an enemy. So let's first actually start off by using another battle scope to analyze these guys. Ha! So you can learn about enemies by attacking them over and over and over again, but that takes so long compared to just using a battle scope. Or there's some other things. Uh, eventually Altina will get a craft that lets her analyze enemies. And there's also a uh, an art called, I believe, just Analyze, that will also do the same thing. And that way you get all the information you need. So you can see that these guys are particularly weak to fire arts and resistant to earth arts. I shall go. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, I wonder what level she learns her Analyze skill at. Can't remember. So you have attack and supports. Uh, Altina apparently doesn't have any supports just yet. But you have these other arts. 
Now these two elements actually are not among the uh, ones that were listed just now. So let me look at uh, Y detailed information. They don't appear there in the elemental efficiency, but there are of course seven types of elements. There's the ones here, which would be earth, water, fire, and wind. But there are three other ones of which these two belong to. This is time, this is mirage, and the gold one is space. Charging. Here I go! Fortunately, Yuna only knows earth arts at the time. Does she have a support? No, she does not. Well, let's stay here and let's try attacking to see that physical damage isn't going to do a whole lot to these let's guys. Go. So you're better off using arts. Uh, it's my turn. Arcus, activate. <laughs> yeah. And Reen should finish it up here with the firebolt. Ha! All right, nice work. All right, on to the next one. Sit. Oh, there's a chest here. Uh, I found some treasure. Breath R, a new quartz. It seems to be a quartz. Yeah, one of us should set it in their orbit. Well, obviously. Quartz. There are several varieties of quartz that can be used with Arcus 2 orbits. Sample 1, quartz that enable you to use specific arts, like Aqua Bleed or Firebolt. Uh, example 2, quartz that increase your stats, such as HP 1 and Evade 1. And example 3, quartz with multiple functions, mostly rare quartz. So these do both. They give you, you know, at least an art or maybe two, but they also do another thing. So the rarer the quartz, the more it does. So eventually you'll find quartz that not only do they unlock more than one art, but they'll also boost your stats and give you other things. Now the quartz system has changed a lot over the years. Back at the start of the series in Trails in the Sky, uh, not only were Orbins not nearly as fancy as this, like the Arcus 2 is essentially a smartphone. You can tell by the big screen it has on it and everything. But back in the day, uh, Orbits were essentially just pocket watches. They're pocket watches that let you cast magic. And that was really all they were. And the system in which the magic was built on has also changed. It used to be that uh, there, are a number, there are a number of lines in the Orbit, as you can see to the right. You can even move it with the right stick. And you would have to hit certain values on each line to unlock certain arts. So every quartz would have like a value like you know, two wind and three fire, or whatever, just an example. That's probably not a real value, but whatever. You get the idea. And to unlock a certain art, you would have to have a certain number of each value on any particular line. Well, Trails of Cold Steel, they changed it up a bit and they streamlined it to where now most arts are unlocked through a single quartz, you know, like Breath R. This is uh, unlocks a quartz called Breath, which restores HP in a certain area. And that's how a lot of arts are unlocked now, in addition to the rare quartz that unlock multiple, etc. This is another tutorial battle. Now the new enemy. It's a bit tiresome having to deal with them all. I think it's finally my time to shine. Ah, the Gunbreakers. We're finally going to see what they could do, I take it. Here's hoping they live up to your all your boasting earlier. Oh, they will. Just you watch. Let's actually switch to Yuna. All right. so again, you can switch your lead party member. This enemy will also stay still. So what's cool about Yuna is that, again, she is both uh, versed in mid-range as well as short range. So her gunbreakers can do this. They can be a regular strike attack. But at certain distances, you can also shoot enemies. An opening. It's kind of hard to know exactly what the distance is. But you can change your her field attack depending on the range. It's something you just kind of get a feel for. And you know whether or not, like, ah, this is far enough to where it's going to be a bullet. Versus, I'm too close, this is going to be a strike. But it also, of course, affects how she plays in real combat. So you have the mode change. Press ZR to change unit's mode during battle. Using whichever mode is most effective for the, most current, for the current situation. Striker mode, weapon type, strike. 
and gunner mode weapon type Pierce. So let's switch her to gunner mode. Set gunner! So Set her striker mode, of course, hits one enemy at a time, whereas gunner! The gunner mode has a longer range and can hit multiple enemies. Let's actually go for these two in the back. Yeah! Break. Ah, this is what I tried to explain at the start of the demo. Break occurs when the enemy's break gauge is reduced to zero. This will disable the enemy for a brief duration. Dealing damage to an enemy's HP will also damage its break gauge. When break occurs, the enemy drops its held items. The enemy's turn is delayed. The enemy's status buffs are removed. Effects during break. Attacks will always unbalance the enemy. The enemy's defense is reduced. The enemy cannot act for one turn. Certain, craft, certain crafts inflict more break damage than others. Exploiting an enemy's elemental weaknesses will also increase the amount of break damage it receives. Let's go! So let's actually, once again, use Battle Scope to analyze the juicy order. Yeah. See that it doesn't like Earth Arts, actually. My turn! And the Jeweled Ripper, what was, what was it you didn't like? Also Earth Arts. Actually, I'm going to use a craft here with Kurt and try to... Uh, let's go for these two in the back. Try to get rid of them. Uh, strike! Oh, that broke them and killed both. Now. All right. Grianak, activate fire. Oh, lucky miss. An opening. And that was with a critical on the board too. When an attack misses, the target will counterattack if the attacker is in range. And if it's a ranged uh, party member that uh, gets a miss on them, like for example, Yuna when she's in gunner mode right now then it almost doesn't matter what uh, how far the attack came from because they'll be able to hit regardless in most situations. Yes, enemies can cast I'm arts up. as well. Uh, I wonder what it's casting on itself, I think. Yeah, it's using tier, which is a heal art. Let's go. Huh. I'm up. Everyone okay? So you see that uh, depending on how you battle, you get an experience bonus on the right for all the various things you can do, like breaking enemies, using weak attacks. There are all sorts of things that add to your bonus. And when you gain experience, you get uh, so much into your levels. See, Irene starts off at a higher level than his students. And you also gain experience in your Master Courts. So those all gain 14 experience. So the Master Courts have levels. I believe they touched on that, that they grow over time. I believe they go up to level like five or six or something like that. And as they level up, they gain more arts, more starting arts, as well as other like unique passive abilities and stuff like that. Bigger stat bonuses, etc. On your left, you have the items you gain from battle. So we got a couple of beast flesh items, which can be used for cooking. Curia Bomb, which is a great standard item, which you'll get plenty of. Those cure any status ailments. Then on your right, you get Sepith. Uh, Monster Shrop Sepith. There, you see there are seven types, plus an eighth one, actually. Well, the seven at the top are, of course, the elements. Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, Time, Space, and Mirage. And those, that Sepith uh, can be used for all sorts of things. One, you can sell it for, for Mira, for your cash. But you can also use it to create new quartz at certain locations. Certain, uh, certain places in the game, uh will let you make new quartz that you can throw into your armaments. And the very bottom one is Sepith Mass, which was introduced in Cold Steel 1, which has no purpose except to be sold. So that's effectively money right there. So rather than like enemies just straight up giving you money, they drop Sepith Mass, which you can sell for money. I guess it's more immersive that way, because like why would a monster have just coins and bills on it? No, it has Sepith Mass, and then the Sepith Mass uh, converts into cash. Their suppressive fire capabilities are impressive, but the trade-off is that the gun function lacks the same firepower as the batons have. I suppose it's all about how you use them. They're very versatile weapons. Agreed. Honestly, they're more impressive than I'd imagined. Ha, huh, so you admit it. I was speaking strictly about the weapons. Their wielder is a separate matter entirely. Tell me, does one of your fancy sword moves involve pulling your head out of your ass? Uh, now now you two. About Yuna's mode change. 
Although gunner mode doesn't get the same attack and defense boost as striker mode, the range and area of your normal attacks will increase, as will your counter range. Generally speaking, striker mode should be used against a single powerful opponent, while gunner mode is best against a swarm of enemies. You can also change units mode from the equip screen in the cat menu, though, though that is an option, I don't know why you would do that, that's a bit uh, more cumbersome. Ah, oh, treasure chest. Firebolt R. Well, let's go into back in. Whoops. Go back into our orbits. Oh, quartz. Let's throw it on Yuna. So now we're at the point to where we'll we're it through quick. most tutorials. Not all of them, but now they're gonna let us fight enemies at our own pace. It's my turn. Huh. Everyone okay? Ah! So you always want to break those boxes when you find them. They're going, uh, most of it goes into your assault gauge, which is already full for me, but we'll get to use it shortly. There's another big one. Yeah, I think now would be a good time to try combat links. Agreed. Hmm, this will be my first time trying them out. Trying them in combat is the best way to learn. First off, let's get things set up. You now use combat links. Combat linking is a phenomenon which occurs, which connects Arcus 2 users to each other. By sharing sensory input and mental impulses with one another, linked attack, linked characters can fight together even more effectively. Link abilities. Fighting battles and viewing certain events increase link experience. And when enough link experience has been earned, the character's link level will increase. A higher link level between two characters will increase the variety of link abilities they can use. You can now set links. You can change combat link settings in the tactics page to the camp menu. You can form combat links in the tactics section of the camp menu. Let's go there. This is tactics, and I believe it's it's X. So let's set it uh Let's go here. Now, uh, let's see if we show... Ah, they don't let you see this menu yet. Maybe after this battle. So, all right. What I was going to do is show off the, the assault attack. How's this? Take them down. this enemy's pretty strong, so it's not a bad idea to use it and get that triple advantage. Link attacks. Performing attacks in certain crafts gives characters a chance to unbalance enemies. Successfully unbalancing an enemy allows you to perform a follow-up attack while they are off balance. Weapon types. The likelihood of unbalancing an enemy depends on the enemy's unbalance efficiency or efficacy, Jesus, and the type of weapon used to attack it. Rush. A powerful link attack which consumes the bravery points you gain from repeated assist attacks. Should be brave points. Press X to when the link attack appears. A rush will inflict 5 times the normal break damage, 400% up. Against radius or attack radius, large circle centered on the unbalanced enemy. Alright, so let's actually start once again with using a battle scope to check out this big enemy. It doesn't like wind arts. I'm up! So unfortunately I just missed the opportunity to use by doing that with Kurt. Crimson Slash! It's down! I'll assist. Very well. Alright, let's cast an art. Let's use air strike on it. Activate. Alright! That's right. You guys don't particularly like fire arts, do you? My turn. Yeah. Let's see what they do. Regular attack. Regular attack. Yeah. There we go. Let's go. Sit. It's down. I'll assist.
Very well. Yeah. Missed. Very Help lucky me. miss. Behold the Vander style. Counter damage tends to do a lot. Not bad, you guys got it to work. So that was a combat link. It felt like I was completely in sync with everyone else. I detected no issues with linking between our current members. It appears we will have no issues going forward. That's kind of a nod to Trails of Cold Steel 1 in particular, where they kind of went with a unique design choice of having uh, several party members not like each other at the start of the game and refusing to link with one another, which made your battle strategy a bit more complicated in the first half of the game. I guess maybe a lot of people didn't like that, so they changed it up. So even though like Kurt and Yuna kind of start off on the, the wrong foot, as does uh, Yuna and Reen himself, they fortunately don't, uh, it doesn't affect your ability to link with each other in combat. So I can link up uh, Reen and Yuna if I really wanted to. Yes, yeah, so Reen's class, uh, the original class seven from the Thor's main campus, did help with the uh, like beta testing for the first Arcus, the Arcus 1. So combat links are not new to this game. They were introduced in Trails of Cold Steel 1. Mm, nothing. I understand what the Arcus 2 could do now. Let's continue. Yeah, I'd rather not be wandering around down here any longer than I need to. Let's go. Something wrong? I never realized it before, but I was thinking how incredible Instructor Sarah is. Rain's old teacher. Who we saw in the opening section of the demo. She seemed pretty irresponsible and all over the place, but she managed to lead nearly a dozen of us. Hmm? I don't really understand. In any event, I will provide support as usual. If the situation calls for it, please give me orders. Thanks, I appreciate the thought. We must be most of the way through by this point. This is no time to let our guards down. Understood. You now access the link section of the camp menu. About combat links. Combat links are an integral part of the battle system. By linking with each other, characters will be able to use powerful link abilities such as finishing blow. As characters fight together in more battles, their link level grows. They will learn even more powerful link abilities. Forming combat links between party members has no disadvantages, so there's no reason not to keep party members linked at all times. About weapon types and unbalancing. Link attacks can only occur when the enemy is unbalanced, the success rate of which is decided by the weapon type used to deal damage. Squishy monsters are more easily unbalanced by rain slash damage, and hard shelled monsters by Kurt's thrust damage. Other types include Pierce, strong versus flying enemies, and Strike, strong versus rock type enemies. Each character deals different types of damage. Yuna's Striker mode deals strike damage, while her gunner mode deals pierce damage about critical damage and unbalancing. Attacks taken on a turn with a critical bonus have a 100% chance of unbalancing an enemy regardless of the damage type dealt. Taking advantage of this at the right time will be the key to victory. You've just crossed the halfway point. Best of luck on the second half. Let's go. Yes, thank you. Some helpful items there. What kind of campus would build a facility like this on site? Yeah. Oh, that enemy spotted me. I just back up a little bit. Yeah, they eventually give up. And that lets you chase them, though. Okay, good. Our chance! Thought I might have been a little too slow to follow it there for a second. Yeah! It's my turn! Uh let's switch back to Striker. Am I still in range? I am, just barely. Yeah! Let's go! Oh, re-missed. So enemies can counter too, of course. Now. There. Battle complete. Let's continue. I shall go. Yeah. Altina's field attacks are a little bit slower, as you can see. But still, trying to yeah. use everyone here. Our chance to attack. Get it. Get you like a bit of a feel for what they're all like. 
Uh, so here's another little unique quirk of the Cold Steel system. Perfect. So back in uh, the first two arcs of the series, combat was done on kind of a grid system. Every like little space was a square. But with Trails of Cold Steel, it's more of a dynamic uh, playing field you're on. And you can very gradually move your attack ranges and such and place them at just the right spot. So with Trails of Cold Steel 1 onwards, everyone who plays these games knows the good feeling of having a uh, AoE attack like this, a craft, and placing it at just the right spot to where you can hit every enemy on the field, but just barely. It's a very satisfying feeling. Get back! Very well. Yeah. Oh, Kurt missed as well. Taking a lot of counter damage. All right. Set gunner. Switch back to gunner. Let's see, oh, just perfectly in range to where I can hit these two. My turn. Let's go. Sit. My turn. Yeah. Now we missed there turn. yet again, but luckily Altina's range is a bit further, and that one couldn't counter attack. Ah. You know, also at the my miss, creating huh. a lot of misses today. It's my turn. Sit. Well, look at that. It's my turn. Huh. Let's see. One of these ways leads to an item, and it's this one. Let's see what this chest has. Uh, I found some treasure. Proxy puppet. Let's put that on. Uh, wait. What am I looking for? Equip. There we go. Put that on Reen. Revise on KO with fifty. HP once, but breaks afterwards. So it's a one-time use equip. In the event Reen would die, he instead would revive automatically with 50% yeah. HP. Ready. That's a big monster. That thing's huge, way bigger than anything else we fought here. Considering our current fighting strength, it may prove a difficult battle. I sure didn't expect them to let loose something like this down here. I nah, screwed that up a little. Should we back off and search for another route? No. We need to face it head on. Head on? Are you crazy? Not at all. There are four of us, and we can use combat links. As long as we've got the basics down, we'll definitely be able to defeat it. For real? Very well. I'm ready. Understood. Assuming combat stance. Maybe should have healed before doing this, but this is okay. I know what I'm doing. Begin combat. Lucky miss, though, to start off with. All right. So, what did you guys not like again? You were not particularly fans of Earth Arts, so I'm going to hedge my bets and say the same is true of the giant organ. Uh... Now. Actually, let's find out for sure by using a battle scope on this turn. <laughs> and I'm right. Efficiencies are the same. <laughs> Oof. Let's go. Uh, I could use zero arts with Reen, and that would let me insta-cast without consuming EP. But I think I'd rather deal legitimate damage right now. Get back! Yeah, this is helpful. So let's use let's go, two points to use Rush. Yes. Sit. Yeah. And that lets me break even more. Very well. That's exactly what we needed right now. It's down. It's mine. Ha! I shall go. 
All right. So let's see. You're going to move first. Yeah. There. An opening. All right. Oh, that one is still completely at full. Uh, take this! Our chance! It's mine! <laughs> Maybe should have gone rush there to break it. My turn! Well, that takes care of that one. It's my turn! Right, let's hit this one. This should break it. There we go. I shall go. Now! An opening! It's my turn! Stop! My turn! Ha! Behold the Vander style! Yeah! I, I must train even more! We even got an HP 2 chords from Stats that. Updated. There's Detector. Now I can analyze without having to use uh, uh, battle scopes. And this also has the added ability of unbalancing or increasing unbalance, the likelihood, as well as nerfing strength and speed. Enemy monster has ceased movement. Phew, that was pretty tough. In the end, it wasn't as strong as I expected. Behind you! Ah, rookie mistake. Green's gonna show off a little bit of his anime power. Now, bring it on! Green can now use the S Craft's seventh slash fallen leaves. S-Crafts. S-Crafts are powerful combat techniques that consume all of your CP. At least 100 CP is required to use an S-Craft, and their strength is boosted if, if used at 200 CP. By pressing R and a directional button in battle, you can have a character perform an S-Craft even when it isn't their turn. Each character corresponds to, or each character corresponds to one of the four directions based on the party order. That is known as an S break. It's when my you turn. Use it out of order. I, uh, there we go. So you can even do that, like when it's about to be an enemy's turn, you can just go into your S craft menu and S break. Now, I'd like to actually get through this without having to use this, though, because I would like to save our CP for later. Arcus, activate! <laughs> yeah! I'm up! Crimson Slash! Mm. It's my turn! I can gut it out. Let's use Crescent Flash. Get back! Ah, just barely. That's okay, I'll survive this. <laughs> but just barely, though. I can still fight! <laughs> It'll right. make the real nice boss work. fight easier. This is not what the game wanted me to do, but sometimes you can go off script like that. Phew. Yuna, Kurt, Altina, are you all okay? Somehow, no damage received. Glad to hear it. Thanks for acting so quickly, Altina. Yuna, Kurt, putting your weapons away in front of an the enemy isn't very smart. I want your guard down until you've confirmed the enemy is defeated. It's a basic rule of combat. Got it. My apologies. I was caught completely off guard. No, as the leader, it was actually more my fault. I've still got a lot to learn as an instructor. But that's no excuse. Measuring my skills as an instructor is another one of the reasons for this test. So, I need you guys to watch me and decide for yourselves, too. Whether or not I'm worthy of being class 7s, no being your instructor. Oh? Decide for ourselves. After we finish here, any of you can transfer to another class if you want. Personally talk to the principal on your behalf. How's that? 
What are you standing around for? Quit wasting time and get back to the test. You're almost at the end, be careful. Oops, I guess we talked too much. Let's keep going. Stay focused till the end. Understood. How dare he talk like he knows everything? And again, he's... Again? Nothing. But he wants us to decide if he should be our teacher? Yeah. I suppose I hadn't given him enough credit. I've been too arrogant. If I keep this up, there's no way I'll be able to face my father or brother. Yeah, so have I. There's no point in me being here if I'm just going to act like this. Anyway, let's go, Kurt. Can't let that guy keep hogging the spotlight. I agree. Can't let ourselves fall behind Altino, either. Seems like we're near the end. Let's hurry. Marine's health stays the same, but that's okay. With some there. smart magic, I'll be fine. Uh, strike. Now let's there. use Rush again. Yuna. I got it. Yeah. Stop. I can't lose. Sit. It's down. I'll assist. I shall go. Opening. It's finishing blow. It's my so turn. if an enemy has enough uh, or a small amount of health, even after a link attack, then the original party member will come in and deliver the finishing blow. There, wide open. It's mine. Let's go. But even there, that was a little too much for it to activate. I can still fight. Ha. Everyone okay? And that does it. We're at the Univine Hell Keep. Just beyond there are the doors leading to your destination. Be quick about it. Understood. Heading to target point. Let's use the Orbit Charging Station first. So obviously we're about to do a proper boss fight. Let's save. Man, it's ridiculous how much faster that is on Switch than it is PS4, thanks to not using a terrible front-end user interface. Oh. Phew, is that finally the way out up there? The way back to the ground floor. It appears we've reached the designated point. Yeah, it seems so. Sheesh, what is wrong with Erebonians? What are you all thinking building an insane place like this on a school campus? Uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't lump us all together like that. The professor, he really is the famous G. Schmidt, isn't he? Yeah, for better or worse. Though I have no clue why he's here at the branch campus. Wait a second. Be on alert. I have detected a spike in mana. In what? Mana? You guys need to get out of there right away! <clears throat> uh, is this thing... a Panzer Soldat? No, this is... Magic Knight Direwolf. It's a magic knight. An orbal golem from the Dark Ages. Professor Schmidt, are you responsible for this? I happened to acquire a few of these antique machines when they appeared during the Civil War. Though its output is lamentably inferior to Panzer Soldats, its ability to act autonomously is useful. This will be your final challenge in this trial. <laughs> is he serious? What is wrong with him? This is going too far! They're not capable of taking on a magic knight. Only one thing I can do. Heed my call! Valimar! 
The use of a Divine Knight is prohibited for this trial. Level Zero was not calibrated to account for its intervention. Were you to use it against such an opponent, the data I would receive would be useless. You do have another option available to you, Schwarzer. <laughs> against this? Or if you'd prefer, you may choose to activate the new function installed in the Arcus 2s. Please activate Brave Order! Olivier, uh, Prince Oliver said that you would be able to use it for sure, Instructor. I bid you felicitations on your recent graduation. Delayed by duty though it was. I also wish to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Ree. These may seem on the paltry side as a gift for such an occasion, but I'd like for each of you to have the newly completed Arcus II. I've added some fun little communication features to it, just for you. There are a few other new functions that can only be described as brilliant, so uh, do give them a try next time you find yourself in a pinch. Aw, oh, what a good boy. Alright, will do. What is this? Uh, I feel some kind of energy coming from him. A combat link? No, it's different. Prepare to engage in combat! Brave order! Class 7 Special Operations. Put everything you have into defeating the target! Yeah! yeah! Be on guard! It's strong! Brave order! Press up to issue a brave order. Brave orders cost BP to use and provide special buffs to allies without consuming a turn. The number indicates how many turns your party is affected. You can issue a new brave order while counts of the old one still remain. Only one order can be issued per turn, but you can issue the same order multiple times during battle. Brave orders from reserve combats will also be available. So this is the mechanic I was using in the uh, very opening section of the game. But it wasn't available again until now. So by pressing up, you get access to Brave Orders. And unfortunately, Reen's the only party member that can currently use Brave Orders at the moment. So it'll be a while in the game until you unlock Kurt and Yuna's, and you get that excellent combination of Sledgehammer and Windblade I was using earlier. And Reen's starting orders are pretty basic. Raging Fire just uh, increases your damage output for six turns. It also gives you a one-time 10 CP bonus on everyone. And uh, Iron Will will let you um, have 50% damage reduction for 8 turns. It also restores a little bit of HP and EP when you use it. Let's start off with Raging Fire. Let's go! Raging Fire Formation! You can see that we're about to get 3 Brave Points right away on the next turn, so this is basically free. So let's start off with using Crimson Slash. Crimson Slash! Very well. Huh. Ooh, we blinded him. I shall go. So now we actually want to use Detector here. Search mode activate. And figure out what the Magic Knight's Scan all about. Complete. These guys were all over the place in Cold Steel too, and that's how Schmidt got his hands on one. So you don't particularly like Earth Arts, do you? Let's go! Now, let's actually change our order and go into Iron Will because he's about to get a turn. So let's increase our defense. Form up! Iron Will formation! Let's go! Let's see here. Let's use Airstrike Marcus, again. Marcus, activate! <laughs> nope! Oh, right. I should switch Yuna over. My turn. I'm actually going like a bit of an un unoptimal strategy here. I should be spreading them out, but since we're playing on normal, it's not a big deal. Uh, on higher difficulties, having your party members bunched up like that for that attack would be not good. It'd be a good way to get yourself wiped out, but right now it's not a big deal. Arcus activate. <laughs> He's spreading us out for me. It's my turn. Right. Crimson Slash! It's down! 
Let's go, Altina. Yes. Ha! There we go. Now that he's broken, we can deal lots more damage. And also get my break points back this way. Here I go! So let's actually use Raging Fire. Let's go! Raging Fire Formation! Here I go! Let's first switch back to Striker Set. Mode. Striker! And use Cross Break. Uh, take this! Our chance! It's mine! My turn! Ah! Uh, it's down! It's mine! I shall go. Charging. It's my turn! Well, uh, let's see here. Reen's at 189. So I'm actually going to... Let me turn off high speed. I'm going to attack him once. And then, oh, this is perfect. Now! Then I'm gonna do this. I'll I'm gonna use an S break, which is oh, I'm one CP off from doing maximum damage with that. That's so disappointing. Oh, that's a bad feeling. That's okay. This should do plenty. My blade, calm as still water. Now. <laughs> Flash! Fallen leaves! Is that enough? Oh, right. right. We're actually doing too well right now. Silly me. Let's actually uh, back up and go like over here. Very well. All right, let's switch to Iron Will. Form up! Iron Will formation! That was, Let's go. this is a zero order turn, so that was basically free. Let's move over here. There we go. We had to let this to happen. On new game, you have to have this tutorial or else they won't let you advance. Enhance. Certain enemies can become more powerful by entering an enhanced state. Uh, effects on enhance increase your attack and defense status recovery. Enhanced enemies leave themselves open, making them easier to break. Try to break the enemy and regain the advantage in battle. Dark Roar. So it's buffed itself. Go. It's gotten some health back. It's pretty annoying. Uh, My turn. Arcus, activate. Yeah. My turn. Charging. Oh, it's going to crit Reen with that ground buster. Oh, it actually knocked out all Tina. That's actually super unlucky. It's okay. I'm well. pretty sure I can bring her back. Yeah, I have a reviving mom. Oh, but I'm out of range, so... Let's actually move in this direction. Here I go! Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to stop you, am I? Well, try. Ah, that works. It's my turn. Well, Altina's not going to come back, so... She's going to miss out on the experience. So that's not a big deal. For everyone's sake, I can't afford to lose. All right, got it. Yeah, I did it. I must train even more. It's a shame. We wouldn't have gotten Altina knocked out at the game too well and gotten his health down before the <laughs> enhanced tutorial. We did it. Go. <sighs> Stamina depleted. A short rest is required. Uh. Oh, you guys did amazing. The trial's complete. But you took this way too far, Professor. Hmm. That was faster than I expected. I'll have to increase the difficulty next time. Huh? Could you please listen to me? This trial was completely absurd. Next time? Is he gonna make us go through all that again? The probability seems high. At least that put an end to our orienteering exercise. Mm. 
thank you. Great job, class. You all handled the first test of Brave Order very well. I'm proud of you. There are some areas each of you could improve on, but you just need to tackle them one at a time. I'm sure today hasn't instilled you with much faith in the idea of Class 7. Your class size and this trial are bound to raise some red flags. The original Class 7, Reen's old classmates, the party from Cold Steel 1 and 2. Then you have an instructor who's only just graduated. What if he doesn't know what he's doing? And that Class 7 was much larger than this one. As he said, there was nearly a dozen of them. Like I said, if you want to transfer to classes 8 or 9, I swear that I'll make it happen. In fact, there were a dozen, including Sarah herself. But it's something I want you to decide for yourselves. Think hard about what you believe, what you want to accomplish, what kind of future you want, and, most importantly, who you are. Only you can figure out if Class 7 is the right place for you. Take all that to heart, and I know you'll have your answer. Una Crawford reporting. From today, I will be part of Class 7 Special Operations. Really? <sighs> Don't get the wrong idea, okay? It's not because I want to. I never wanted to come to this school. I'd much rather be back in Crossbell. I don't like Erebonia, and I don't think much of you either. So it seems. But throughout the entire exercise, your guidance was clear and accurate. If you weren't with us, we never would have beaten that thing. Honestly, it's infuriating. And I'm annoyed I couldn't show off what I learned at the police academy. That's why I'm going to stay in Class 7 until I can prove myself. Until I can show up an annoying hero like you, Ashen Chevalier. She's ridiculous. At least she's consistent in her ridiculousness. <sighs> the annoying part aside, you really don't need to keep calling me a hero. But you know what? I respect that kind of determination. Welcome to Class 7, Yuna. <laughs> Got it. Kurt Vander reporting. I will also join Class 7. That said, I have no definitive reason for doing so. Oh? I simply have no objections to the branch campus's decision to place me in this class. If anything, I'm grateful for the chances it'll give me to test my skills in real combat. I couldn't face my family if I allowed the blades I inherited to rust. So they're heirlooms? Metaphorical. He means the will of the Vander School. I'm also interested in seeing what the Eight Leaves can do. So far, I'm not impressed. Whoa! That's way out of line. I do not believe you're in any position to say that. <laughs> well, that's because I'm still learning. Just like you guys. Welcome to Class 7, Kurt. Thank you. Hmm? How about you, Altina? There is no need for confirmation. While the details are classified, I intend to follow the protocols of the mission. No, Altina, that's not what I mean. The answer needs to come from you. Hmm? <sighs> Does she not understand? I won't accept your participation unless you chose this. I don't care who originally placed you here, whether it was the principal, the intelligence division, or even the imperial government. Why do you want to stay? It can be anything. And it can't be what I said. Hey! Why are you picking on her so much? I still don't get how you guys know each other, but you can't talk like that to a little girl who... I can't think of a reason. All that comes to mind is how I've supported you on all of your operations this past year. If I'm to be at the branch campus, it is only right that I be in your class. It was also Class 7 who once stood in the way of my mission. Even if the students have changed, I find myself somewhat drawn to the name. Does that work? Oh. Uh, it works for now. I'm glad you're staying, Altina. Okay. Oh, brother. You sure drew that out. 
It's been one thing after another. I now officially declare the formation of Class 7 Special Operations. Let's all work hard and grow together. Not just as a class, but as comrades. That was so sweet, Rain. I was wondering how things were going down here. Foolish. No instructor has the authority to change a student's placement. If any of them wanted to transfer, I would have allowed it. Principal Le Guin, with all due respect. Everything worked out, so it's fine. Didn't you hear? They decided for themselves. Classes 8 and 9 had a good start, too. Not bad for a trash bin. The coming days will be very interesting indeed. Train our fledglings well while you can. That is, if you don't want them to be swept away by this turbulent era. Of course! Yes, ma'am. Yeesh! <laughs> this is some school I landed myself in. Damn, he's even worse than Gramps. Coming here to study is crazy enough, but you sure you want to work under that old goat? <laughs> Don't be like that, he's actually pretty amazing. And I feel like I'll be able to make a lot of friends here. But most importantly, I want to do all I can in place of everyone who couldn't come to the Empire. Look at you, all grown up and doing your own thing. Guess I can't call you short stuff anymore, huh? Oh. <laughs> Our old enemies are definitely on the move. And not just them. The Imperial government and a few other groups are up to something too. Thank the freaking goddess that dumbass was around to help me set up a long distance line. If anything happens, I'll be here in a flash. Don't hesitate to call me, Tita, you got that? You bet. But only if you promise me you'll be careful, Agate. Don't do anything too crazy. I see. For both the main and branch campuses? Yes, their first day ended without incident. Class 7, Special Operations, Class 8, Combat Tactics, and Class 9, Military Finance, have all been established. Man, oh man. Just when I thought we finally shoved that beast in a cage, Erebonia's number one sweetheart just had to show up wanting to be an instructor. Indeed. Between them and a certain capable young woman, there's far more talent there than one would ever expect from a trash bin. Perhaps there wasn't a need to send him there from Crossbell so soon after all. Who do you think you're fooling? We all know why you really sent him. But whatever, a powerhouse like him will come in handy. I'm not sure this is appropriate. In any event, the wheels are now in motion. With Northambria's annexation, every bush those serpents would dare hide in has been burned to ash. They have no choice left but to try and reclaim their master's plan. As for the branch campus, that pitiful final act of rebellion from a prince who's lost his blade and his wings. We shall simply have it and my worthless son dance at the end of our strings. Your Excellency. Uh-huh. Laying it on kind of thick, don't you think? By your will, Excellency, we Ironbloods will see your ambitions are fulfilled. Whew! I think the connection's finally gone through. Yay, it worked! I never dreamed I'd be able to talk with you all like this. Indeed. His Highness was too kind to arrange this feature. Doesn't look like Reen or Gaius came through. 
Could be they're too far away. Oh, or maybe somewhere where the signal's super weak. No matter. I'm sure we'll have more than ample opportunities to speak with them in the coming days. That's right. And we can finally fulfill our promise. Well, you sure are fired up. How could she not be? This is the season for reunions, after all. Yeah, spring is here once again. And that concludes the prologue. So save here, put that there. And with the end of the prologue, it also marks the end of the demo. This concludes the Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 demo. Your save data will carry over to the main game where you can continue your adventure. Thank you very much for playing. So there you have it. That's the demo on Switch. Now to be perfectly honest, the whole reason I did this is because I actually needed footage of the Switch version for something else I'm making, which will have been out long by the, before the time you guys see this. But for anyone that's new to the series, or you know, whether you, you're familiar with Trails or you're not, and you're just looking into getting the Switch version, hopefully this, uh, you know, enlightened you into some questions you might have about this version, the quality and all that good stuff. And uh, I won't get too much into that right now because I'm kind of hoping to save that for later, assuming that I'm lucky enough to get a review copy of this game. For on Switch, that is. But uh, I'll just say overall, right there, I was actually pretty impressed. You're obviously sacrificing some things compared to uh, the PS4 and certainly the, the PC version. But in terms of like overall performance, uh, that ran pretty solid. Then again, that was only, of course, in docked mode so that I could capture footage. But uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully getting the full game and checking out how it plays in handheld. Getting to uh, test some of the more intensive areas in the game that are a little further past this point. Well, that does it all for now. I hope I see you all in future ones. Take care. <laughs>